Good meeting, guys. See you. Uh, this is Flotilla Friday, uh, uh, June 25th, 2021. And we started talking about uh, interoperability between, I, I guess, mapping, mapping interoperability between different systems like Factor and Trove and Massive and maybe other things. Um, so, and events is an interesting one um, because Trove has is, is got a very good sense of events and Factor has got a sense of artifacts of events, but not events themselves. Um, Massive actually is pretty good at, I, I, you know, a lot of actually, a, a lot of the OGM wiki, for instance, is meeting, I guess that's an artifact of the, um, but you can re represent a, a, an event to pretty well in Massive Wiki. I don't know that we do, I guess, now that I think about it. But it, it isn't, um, in Massive Wiki land, it's not redundant to have all the information for an event on a wiki page and then also have a link there to Trove or right. Factor. Um, same, same, actually, Vincent's doing that already with, with Trove, right? It, it links out to all the other representations of it it knows about. Um, I think another interesting question about that is whether to start with a fat, a fat representation or a skinny representation, because I, I guess I'm tempted both ways. So thinking of thinking of Trove and a rich representation of a person or an organization or something like that, it's like, well, let's JSON that puppy all up and, you know, and then get it sucked over into a massive page. But but then maybe another way to do it is like, what's the very minimalist thing that we could represent uh, a person with or an organization with? And maybe that's a better place to start. And maybe we would trip over things less if, you know, you just had the bare minimum kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I think this this also, also hi everyone. Sorry, first time speaking. So good to see everyone. Happy Friday. Um, this could also, have, I don't know if you want to weave in the communications conversation we were having, um, Pete, but I think there is some good overlap there in terms of how each plat platform functions. We were basically discussing how OGM should communicate with itself, basically with its members and potentially externally, but to start with how do we keep OGM members up to date with what's going on and how we could use Trove, Factor and Massive in different aspects to showcase interoperability as well as Kind of see see how they work and have have OGM platforms be the basis for OGM communications. Um, just to put it out there. I've got a HackMD app. There's a link in. Oh yeah, let's throw it on. Never mind. <laughs> um, preferred sit there. Be What's that? I said I preferred Sif. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, you guys, did you guys do any updates to the factor um, bookmarking uh, tool? Is it? Why do you ask? <laughs> no, we haven't, but I'm curious. Um, no, I guess I never, uh, I just noticed the like add a new stream button for some reason yeah it's just that's more of a if you come across something you're like i don't have a stream for this yet and you want to put it directly into a new stream you can create it from there okay cool yeah i guess i didn't notice that before um so yeah i'm wondering if a stream can be somehow linked so it seems like so a stream is like a container for artifacts and so i'm wondering what how a stream could link to either a a folder or a page in massive or some of the different data types in trove for example a community so like if you have a stream that is connected to a community sucking in whatever artifacts you mean right yeah I mean, that's the, the, the easiest way to do that is, you know, by, uh, by having the thing available as an RSS feed, um, which 
you know, I, I, I know is a fairly easy thing to do, but would need to be done on the other end. Um, and, and, but the other way to do it is, is just to, um, to, to drag it in by the browser extension or, but, but to automate that, the easiest way to automate it, I mean, there are probably other ways to automate it, but the easiest way is, is, is making it an RSS feed. Um, and yeah, we should talk about that. I mean, it, 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 it certainly, you know, seems doable. We're, we're a little, um, understaffed right now on the, on the, uh, development side. Um, but, but we can talk to our people about, um, how to, uh, how to do that. Yeah, definitely doable. So, so then one of those maps could potentially be like, um, website, um, use the factor Chrome extension goes to RSS feed. And then from the RSS feed gets picked up by Trove or massive and then put somewhere else. Attached yeah, and, to an event or attached to a community or attached to a, a yeah a massive wiki. When I mentioned the RSS feed, I mean the 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 browser extension will work now as is. The RSS feed would be automating like you would go to if there was an RSS feed for the uh, you know flotilla um, uh, Trove group that. Um, that basically any link that was shared or any document that was in the Trove group, um, I'm sorry, the, the, yeah, the, flo the flotilla Trove group um, would automatically go via that RSS feed to Factor. On Factor, all you'd have to do is just say, this stream should include things from this RSS feed and they populate. Um, so that's one thing that you could do that, that you know, could be automated. Um, but, but the browser extension doesn't need an RSS feed to, right. to use. Yeah. So I'm actually curious if you could, Michael, if you could walk us through setting up a flotilla stream that's linked to an RSS feed if and then how long would that process take of setting up a flotilla stream putting some things into it and then get an RSS feed and because if you gave me an RSS feed link for, for flotilla then I could then see how it could connect potentially to Trove. Yeah no it's we we don't it's not that it generates an RSS feed on our end it's just that, that it takes an RSS feed on externally for us to bring it in automatically. Um, it's easy to- So Factor doesn't generate an, an outgoing RSS, it, it's bringing things in via RSS. Yes, yes. So, I mean, if there was a flotilla stream, I mean, flotilla on Factor might say, here are some existing um, RSS sources that we want to follow and filter and you know do things like that that's easy to do on factor and pull in stuff from other publishers that have RSS feeds of which Trove could be one if Trove generated RSS feeds um, and and so if if Flotilla wanted to on factor have an RSS feed of all the video records. I mean, that's that's one you would do manually because it's pretty easy to do once a week. Um, but you know, if there were other things that were being spun off from the activity on Trove that just wanted to be in this filterable bucket, um, so that you know they weren't that they were findable by other people um, if we wanted them to be. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I haven't had enough coffee yet, so I'm probably <laughs> making a whole lot of sense. Uh, uh, so just, just really quick, yeah. So factor, on Factor right now, and sorry, Bill, I see your hand up. 
I, I do want to get to Bill as well, but just to clarify real quick. So right now, if you want to take your stream off a of factor, you can embed it elsewhere. We don't currently generate RSS feeds, but you can embed if, if you have an embed function. Um, we ingest RSS feeds to create streams, or you can, mm. as you know, populate manually. Um, but sorry, Bill, right. I know you, your hand up. Yeah, so here's, let me... Um... So maybe I don't understand this, but so I've been playing with factors and just trying to figure out how I might use it. But so here's the thing that this interoperability that make that I thought thought for me was like a kind of a, a usage. So if we had something in Trove and it had this link to, you know, resources about this community or event or whatever else shows up in trove as a you know a primary ontological thing i would like to if i'm like you know roaming around the web at 3 a.m to just be able to drop it into a factor feed and make and then it would show up someplace else so i'm thinking when you said interoperability i'm thinking about two way not just one way because then it allows me to use factor and or to go back and say oh i got this whole this whole stream of my own little you know, unconsciousness. I think I just want to put it or move it over here. Um, so I'm thinking, is that, does that just get into some different area of well, information space, you know, management that, that isn't appropriate? No, I think, I think there's two probable options there. Like we, we've talked about the RSS feed, kind of two way RSS feed, if that makes sense, like factor producing an RSS that feeds into Trove. The other would be kind of an API of, of somewhere where you could choose, I want this to go to this specific thing post to go to Trove, or this specific link to go to Trove, but not everything. Um, that would be probably a heavier lift, but- Yeah, like if I had in my factor, I've just got a little Trove, you know, stream, I guess, yeah. like whatever. And I just, and stuff I realize, I'm just gonna throw it in there, man, because yeah. <laughs> I read it and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna leave it there. Well, um, the, the, the use case, the kind of um, the single player use case of I see something that matters. I'm going to, you know, either upload it from my hard drive or use the browser extension if it's a link or, you know, whatever, whatever means, or I'm going to jot down this thought and I'm going to put that on factor and then to be able to, and that, that's something that you and only you see um, and it might be something that you want to read later, then to read it, process it, decide where it goes and have it be an easy option to put that on, oh, this should go to the flotilla trove place. And this should go to, you know, my other working group. And this should go to my family. And this is just for me and stays here in this folder, that kind of um, easy movement of the, the granular artifacts is what we're, you know, pushing to, to do. Um, and I think, I think that, that, you know, figuring out what, what we're each um, good for and how we could support each other in that um, seems, seems really useful. And, and by the same token, you know, the, the findability, I think when you're on Trove, um, your, your group focus um, is, is much more robust than anything that um, you do on Factor as, as a group, other than just kind of processing information. You know, you're much more able to see events, people, it's, it's, it's great for that. If there was as much information on Trove as there is on Factor, and well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I know Vincent's vision for Trove is, is <laughs> I was gonna say massive, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Vincent's world, we just live in it. Trove, right. Trove will encompass everything. <laughs> um, but, but I do think that, um, the kind of 
I've been thinking a lot, frankly, um, Pete, since you since you brought it up of lumpers and splitters, and um, and I don't know. I don't know which one I am, <laughs> but but factor is definitely a splitter for purposes of lumping, um, and you know it would be great if like if you were looking for something a subject on factor or filtering against a certain tag or term that you would turn something up that was just one granular piece of massive wiki or something that's going on on trove and be able to link back to that by virtue of having found that through your interest in a subject or a person or whatever um, which might not be as easy to do elsewhere i don't know um so, so far in this conversation I, I feel like we've hit on two things and right now i feel like we're talking about uh what what i wrote in the notes as syndication communication channels uh so we talked about apis and rss there's another old blog uh thing called pingbacks um yeah. which uh, <laughs> uh which has some similarity right if you had a, a a trove tag or something like that um factor could know that you want you want to send something to to trove whenever you know you you hit the tag i don't know uh sustainability or or sdg or whatever um so i pingbacks aren't exactly that but there's there's some concept at least of you know hey i'm talking about this thing and other people you know want to know about it and so there's Kind of a subscription push thing going on there so then the other thing syndication communication channels and then the other thing we kind of skipped around or danced around maybe was um just the objects and the schemas right for the objects um and so when i'm thinking about that i i, I kind of like the idea maybe we can it, the i feel like there's it, it's easy to get bogged down in going okay Vincent has this really rich representation of an, of an event. And then how much, you know, I, I want to copy all of that into massive. And then it's like, okay, then it starts getting complicated, right? But maybe another, the, the skinny approach, I like the, you know, hey, maybe the, the way to, to start at least is the thing that you want, that we all want to share about a person is very little, right? Like their name and maybe one URL for them. And then, and then the and then I, the thing that that catches for me right after that is how do I know that the Peter Kaminsky and Trove is the same Peter Kaminsky that you're talking about in Massive? That's the same Peter Kaminsky you're talking about in Factor, right? So pretty quickly we have to figure out how to negotiate some kind of uh, a unique global ID, or a new a, a unique ID, I guess, in Trove. You know. Um, okay, there's four Peter Kaminsky's in Trove, and I want to talk about this particular one, not about the other ones. Um, uh, and then you have to figure out how, how to pick the right one out of four different different Peter Kaminsky's. But anyway, um, I, I wonder if we could just start kind of, uh, you know, like, and, and then I guess the other thing is in Massive, you want to be able to say, I guess at, at least the, the micro object that you want to share with everybody hey i'm talking about peter kaminsky so that you can show the user you know what object you're talking about and here's maybe just a tiny bit of information about about that person like their home page or or something um and then maybe you want members or affiliations i guess peter kaminsky is affiliated with flotilla and ogm and and people app and whatever and then and then I guess when you talk to Trove, you want to say, and I'm talking about the Peter Kaminsky with this ID rather than the other ones. But you don't, I feel like you don't need much more than that to start data flowing around. And maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's a place to start. Um, and then it would be like people and maybe organizations and then events feels like the next phase up. It feels like harder in a way kind of. Uh, so I guess maybe the one after that would be people and organizations and maybe resources, what Vincent calls resources, uh, bookmarks basically, right? Because that's something we can all, kind of all share and have, all have interest in in different ways. And then they probably do different things. With. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry. Yeah, and, and I was just going to say, and Trove actually has two different data types, partially for A-B testing experimentation and partially because I'm trying to understand whether or not my theory of change is stupid or brilliant. But it's, um, so there's what I'm calling resources, which are like a Wikipedia page where you can't have a duplicate. So if you, if you um, catalog the page for the UN SDGs and then somebody else catalogs that same page, you are kind of forced to build on top of each other's work instead of duplicating efforts. Um, and, and so the purpose for that is like, yeah, oh, someone already cataloged and add these tags. I could add more or I can propose that something be changed or deleted. Um, but there's a lot of cases where that's actually kind of ridiculous. And so then I have another data type called URLs and URLs are anyone can add a URL. There could be a hundred of them. You could link a bunch of URLs to a resource. You could have like the one piece of truth that has a bunch of URLs linked to it. And URLs, I'm not caring as much about if there's a duplicate, if there's a typo, like you don't really have to categorize it well. So um, for example, you can add a bunch of URLs to your profile, to a event, to a community. And it's, it's a little bit like, it could be messy. I'm not going to get like mad if you don't like tag something. Whereas like if you add a bunch of nonsense resources and don't tag them, then, I, then like you lose reputation for that. And so, um, yeah, so I'll just throw that out there. I have plenty more I could say there, but I know Bill had something to add too. No, I think you answered the question. Oh, cool. I didn't have that question, but that was a good answer for the question I did have. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. My question changed while you were talking. Um, I can't, Pete's got a question for me in the chat that I can't answer right away right now because, you know, Friday morning. <clears throat> um, Coffee all around for everybody. <laughs> um, so the, here's a question for resources. So how in Trove, you want like a community to, you know, gather information about its own resources and most likely link to them in other places, not accumulate a bunch of like, you know, Trove is not the database of, you know, all information about say OGM. You know, but it could have, you know, two and a half million links to OGM things. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I I'm being facetious, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a hard question because I don't want to have all the data, data that Google has. Like, I don't want it to be where, like, I don't want to employ some like web scraper to like scrape all the information off of Google and then put it in Trove. Uh, I kind of would like Trove to be uh, a curated list of resources. And part of that could be a resource, like in the future, you could maybe set a rule where a resource doesn't show up unless two people independently added it. Right. And so like, that's the kind of thing, like, like there are certain things like that, where um, we all post like links all the time of like, Hey, check out this cool thing I found or check out this site. And um, yeah. So to be able to like put that in a shared catalog where instead of sharing the same link a million times, you could just link back to that link and then you could add on top of it and like add more context and connections. So I'll show you guys. Um, Sounds like, you, hypothesis, uh, sounds like hypothesis for these uh, resources. I mean, because you're going to have, it's possible to have some annotation about something, which for me is like part of factors. You can add a whole bunch of interesting little things around the link you're saving from the web. You got two little boxes you can put information in and could be the same, could be different. Yeah, so I can you show know. you guys what the resources look like on Trove. It's It's... It's, it, it's quite, um, how do I say it? Like a combination of ridiculous and extensive 
um, whatever that word is. Expensive? No, I'm. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, well, Vince, Vincent, are you are you about to share share your you screen? You can go first. Me? Yeah. Oh, I was, Michael, just, I was just going to say about um, about the notion of those um, the the link the link sharing um, and and your. Vincent, what you're saying about, you know, kind of reputational factors around that, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> but um, the idea that, um, that the curated cream of the crop from the point of view, you know, the way we were talking about maps look different depending on what point of view you're looking at them from. And yeah. information that is shared information looks different from the perspective of each group. Like maybe, you know, the flotilla group and the OGM group and the Kiko lab group and this individual would um, link to the same thing, but it would be in different contexts with different annotations in different places on Trove. Um, and it would let you know I don't, I don't know if you're like a member of one group on Trove, whether you, I guess it depends on the group and their degree of exposure of what they're sharing with each other, whether it takes you to the other group because the other group may not want you to see the context in which they're sharing it. I'm not sure how that works. Um, <clears throat> but on Factor, those, um, those links can be disaggregated and found. I mean, it's interesting. I was thinking about it in terms of the like free Jerry's brain notion <laughs> um, that Trove wouldn't want to be the place where Jerry's however many million, Pete, you probably know, um, you know, Jerry's brain would not want to be dumped on Trove. That's not what Trove is looking to be. Factor actually wouldn't mind Jerry's brain being dumped on Factor. And those links that mattered, I'm dumped is the wrong word, sorry, but <laughs> um, those links and the fact that they have simple little connections to each other um, is a useful. <laughs> 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 that was funny. <laughs> um, it's going to be the geeky thing. Are you using a trove minus F or what? Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I lost my uh, <clears throat> my place due to Vincent's joke. But um, sorry, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just like, you know, the, the, the database, ideally the graph database with like, you know, um, useful edges um, of a lot of stuff that matters to people is a good thing on factor, is probably overload on Trove and is knit together probably on massive wiki. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, the, I'll, I'll stop there. It was just uh, an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I don't know if I have a good answer to that. Like, yeah, if Jerry was like, I wanna put everything in Trove, I don't know if I would have a good answer because yeah. Um, but let me show you guys what at least the current vision is for the resources, what I'm calling resources. So, um, Okay, so this is the OGM community, which has a resources tab. And this resources tab has uh, a list of different uh, websites, resources that have been tagged with OGM. And so um, Wardley Maps, awesome list. So like 
some of the resources are a link to a list of other resources. So this is an example of like, uh, if you click here, um, it, it's, yeah, instead of importing the entire list, we're just linking to the other, the list of things, right? Where you can list to another collection or a stream or list to a whole wiki instead of importing all the contents of it when possible. Um, and so then each one of these uh, resources has their own resource page. Um, and this has um, the type, the topics, the tool, the relevant communities, the audiences, like who is it useful for, mind mappers, links. Um, and then, you know, being able to have this like linked data is really important to Trove. So like being able to click tool and then see a list of other tools or being able to click open global mind and go back to the OGM community or be able to click, oh, what's a mind mapper and then see everything that is tagged with mind mappers. That's something that's really important for Trove. Yeah, that's great. The hey, Vincent. Oh, sorry. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I go was ahead. just going to ask, ask a, a Trove question. Um, but if you're still presenting, go, go. Um, no, you first. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, how does one, uh, cause just cause I was trying to do this, how does one, I mean, there, there are groups that exist on Trove and I'm a member of them in real life, but I'm not a member on Trove. And I don't see how to like knock on the door and say, hey, Kiko Lab, um, can I be in the Trove group? You know, and or I, I'm trying to remember there, there were there were like a few things that were that existed on Trove that outside of going out of Trove, yeah, like your list here includes a bunch of things that I would join if it was possible to join them, but I couldn't see how to join them um, or even ask to be invited to them without going offline and saying, you know, hey, Charles and Lauren, invite me to Kiko Lab. Hey, you know, Vincent, invite me to X. Yep. Um, so right now, um, the way to, so I'm kind of taking, yeah, as the admin of a lot of the initial groups, I'm still in the process of, and I haven't spent enough time as probably could have to kind of properly, for example, I haven't had enough time with Jerry or Phil um, about OGM and OGM's trove to where I'm not even confident that I know that they know immediately how to invite someone into the group. Um, but basically, if you are an admin of a group, then you have the ability to sort of go to edit members and then you can invite anyone who's on the platform into the group. Um, so that's right now the, you could also make other people an admin. Um, so I also wouldn't mind if OGM had like 10 admins and like 10 people doing this. Um, and yeah, so basically you could, if you send, you could invite someone by their email if their email is already in the database, it'll just add them automatically. Right. For somebody cool. who's already on Trove, like if I wanted to add you to Kiko Lab, I would just do that. And now you're in. Um, the feature to be able to like apply or request to join a group, I had turned off. Um, I should probably turn it on now. I had it turned off because I didn't want people just joining a million groups when those groups weren't even like properly onboarded yet. So I think I just probably have to set up some logic where you can join groups, but you can only join a group where it's past a certain like check that that group, that group's admins have been onboarded. That way they know how to actually accept people who um, <laughs> join the group. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a kind of chicken and an egg problem in some yeah. ways. And, and um, so I might also want to, like another thing that's in before this is kind of like um, email notifications. So if 10 people are knocking on the door to get into the Kiko Lab group, and then Lauren and Charles just don't go on Trove for a while, right. um, like you might want to, wanna, yeah, you might want to send up an email notification where it's like, hey, 10 people are waiting to get into Trove. Can you tell them if they're actually a member or not? So yeah, it's, it's trying I mean, to kind of have this semi-permeable membrane, but also not 
making it possible for what someone to just go in and join every single group on Trove that they're not even a part of those communities. Right. Because then it's like, what's the point of having separate communities if you're just in all of it? So. I mean, we've got, um, we've got a lot of that, what you just said, most of what you just said set up on factor. I don't know if there's, you know, any usefulness in, um, in looking at that UI. I'm, I'm sure there's no code sharing value. I mean, be happy to um, share whatever we can. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I totally get, I was, I was looking for that. I mean, you, you explained everything I was wondering. <laughs> um, and, and the one other question I had is how does one create a group on, on Trove? Or are um, we not allowed to? I have, a, <laughs> I have a link for that as of yesterday. Okay, so, okay. so it wasn't that I, <laughs> it, was, um, it wasn't so there. So <laughs> action equals create group, boom. Now you can create a group. Um, <laughs> um, part of the reason is because I didn't want duplicate groups because almost all the groups that I knew of were already in Trove as a, a like I had, a, I was making my own database of groups and I was like, why am I going to make people like re-enter all their information when they could just build on top of like, I already had a profile thing for OGM because I was right. curating this list of these different groups. So most of the groups are that I've talked to and like that I have a list of 150 groups. So yeah, most of the groups are already there. So it wasn't a, a necessary feature to add in the beginning. Cause like you just can edit. I just wanted to make it easy to edit the group, but yeah, now you can create a group. Uh, that's the link. Um, soon it'll also be available. Uh, expect some bugs with that link. Sure. I mean, I've only tested it twice. It seems like it works, but that's clearly uh, not enough. And so, yeah, once um, I could do a little more testing, maybe over the weekend, then that'll be an option on the dashboard. It actually is an option, but it's grayed out. It says like right, coming right. soon. I, I, it, it, I don't know if it said, I did click on something that didn't work. Uh, I, it was probably the create a community and a community and a group are the same thing, right? Yeah, I think I'm going to change it to be group across the whole platform yeah. because group is shorter. Uh, I like the name community better, but it doesn't fit on the damn mobile like tiles on the bottom because community is such a long word. Yeah. And then I have like home, which is four letters and then community is like, <laughs> so. I feel your pain. I was just reading about the Marxism and uh, Lenin and stuff. And I learned that uh, the word for councils is also Soviets. <laughs> That's got fewer characters than a community and that would really shake people <laughs> that'll, up. That'll go over the page. <laughs> um, in our meeting yesterday, somebody from uh, New Zealand recommended or, and, and slash Australia, apparently the word mob is used there as like a friendly name for a group. And I was like, yeah, in Long Island, the mob is not a great <laughs> name to use for a group. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a name for one group that we don't have anything to do with. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had the suggestion, why don't you just call it a mob? That's short. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, hopefully within the next week or so, you'll be able to join, request to join a group. And then the people who can let you in, if it's a closed or restricted group, actually will get notified. That's, that's high on my to-do list. Um, the, yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of those. Yeah, there's a lot of those kind of like obvious features that just we haven't gotten to yet. Another one of them that I just added this week was search, um, which Pete, I think I fixed the bug that, yeah, that, <laughs> that the last time you tried it, um, like a site-wide search. So that's something we just added. It's on the header now. You could search anything on the site except for projects probably for some reason. Um, yeah, so it's it's coming together. It's, it's, there's all so many pieces to the puzzle and I haven't even thought about messaging or really notifications or any of that kind of stuff, which is like a whole nother 
yeah. a whole nother thing. Just it's it's those things where you kind of just need it. It's like nothing. There's nothing new about it. You kind of just as a if you're building some sort of platform, you need notifications. You just kind of have to do it. You know, it's like. But I'm also at the same time trying to like put intentional design into like making things better than they usually are. And that's hard and that takes time because you're not just like copying and pasting, you know, how every single platform does notifications, which is basically the same. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, there's expectations that people have, but you know, there are ways in which you want to fulfill them and there are ways in which you want to, you know, upset them. <laughs> I mean, upset the expectations, not upset the people. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> doing one without the other is sometimes, you know, a challenge. Um, yeah, and so there was one other thing I wanted to share about resources, um, but if, yeah, if there's stuff on this topic that you guys want to chime in with, then I guess that probably takes precedent. I'm still wondering if we can define like a, a person as something that exists in massive and factor and, and uh, true. Well, that's actually, and I think Vincent, you're going to be part of these conversations, but we're working on a profile schema, Michael and I are on a profile schema group as part of the CTA, which Vince, I know you're talking to Kala. It might be good to combine those efforts because one thing we don't want to do is create multiple standards, like just keep. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can, we can give, an update from that maybe next time and or we can invite you guys to join for the profile schema because I, I think that michael and correct me if i'm wrong but that should include kind of like what makes up a person on a yeah. platform i mean the thing that we're doing in that group um there's a little bit of a question of the difference between um a profile schema and a you know user ID. Um, I mean, they obviously relate to each other. The 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 simple interoperable. I mean, simple is the wrong word, but the the finite um, interoperable login capabilities are one thing. Um, that's a piece of of what we're doing it's but we're also trying to come up with um profile fields that would allow i mean if you're on trove and factor and and you join massive wiki i mean pete going back to what you were saying earlier um the idea that your profile information, if, if you have a kind of common login um, standard, that your profile information that would live on, you know, decentralized live with you, that you could auto populate your profile from that um, and the fields would know, know each other. Um, I've, I've got a little bit different use case. Those are all great use cases. And I, I started writing them on line 19 or so. Um, uh, the, the use case I'm holding today is I'm in OGM Wiki, a massive mm -hmm. wiki. And I just want to be able to see everybody else who's affiliated with OGM, right? Um, so it, it's actually kind of all I need for that is their name and then an affiliation to, to OGM in some way. And then those do relate, you know, somebody, somewhere I have a profile, maybe it's on Trove or maybe it's on um, peterkaminski.org or, you know, Twitter or whatever. Um, and then there's also another thing, which is a login identity. And then uh, Bill brought in Keybase. Uh, yet another thing is um, who is this Peter Kaminsky? And when I'm looking at Twitter, Peter Kaminsky, is that the same as looking at Trove, Peter Kaminsky? And is that the same as looking at Facebook, Peter Kaminsky, right? So all kind of like slightly different use cases and they're definitely related, but they're definitely also kind of different. 
And I guess the other thing that I'm, I'm interested in is today, at least, um, I don't, I don't really care about somebody being able, all, all I care about is like coordination, like who is this person and is it the same as, you know, where I see them other places. And I don't care. If, I mean, I care about this a lot, but I don't care about for, for the purposes of this uh, use case. I don't care that you can copy over my, my various URLs or my, you know, my uh, short description or my long description or something like that from that, that, that is a, a great use case too. You know, I've got a description published in OGM forum, you know, Hey, you know, I'm adding myself in the factor or trove. Can you just suck over the profile that I've already got there? Right. Or off of my home site or whatever. Um, but just like, who is this person? And, yeah. you know, do I, do I understand who it is in all these different places? Yeah. The, the sovereign identity. Um, yeah, except it's, it's, um, self-sovereign. I, I'm not even sure if I care that it's self-sovereign. Usually I do. Today, what I care about is that it's, it's correct. Mm. Um, and and maybe it's actually not a sovereign identity. It's just when I'm talking about Judith Benham in OGM, is that the same Judy who's over on Trove, you know? And maybe Judy didn't even put herself in either of those places, but, you know, in the process of mapping and stuff like that, we start mm -hmm. describing this Judith Benham who is also Judy someplace else, is, who's also, you know? Yeah. And just how can we tell that's the same person? Speaking of Judy and Judith, this is just offhand. Vincent, do you prefer going by Vincent or Vince? Um, probably Vincent. Okay, okay. That's a, yeah. I heard somebody refer to you as Vince and I wondered, oh, am I being too formal with it? <laughs> okay. um, I'll stick with Vincent. Vincent is, yeah, Vincent's my actual name. I yeah. uh, just, you can call me uh, Vincent, Vince, Vincenzo, but just definitely not Vinny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got to tell you, this is a funny story. So my name is William. And my nickname is Bill. And my mother just would not let anybody call me Billy. She goes, that's just not going to happen. And actually, some friends came to the door and they asked this Billy home. And she just said to them, there's no one here by that name and closed the door on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom did the same thing with Vinny, actually, to my teacher. She, they'd be like, "Oh, so Vinny's doing really good." She's like, "I don't have a son named Vinny. Do not call him that." <laughs> Jeez, my mom called me way worse things than your mom. <laughs> I only had to worry if she actually called me William. I was in trouble, deep trouble. <laughs> Well, I've, I've always been only Michael and I introduced myself as Michael. And when somebody calls me Mike, they almost always are a salesperson. It's like, it's, it's a great kind of scrim on, on interactions. Like I instantly know, oh, okay, you're trying to sell me something. <laughs> Lots of uh, uh, subtle social cues in using a name yeah sorry i pete i interrupted you when you were talking about judy and judith and no 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 i i had finished um i i i oh sorry Michael. i was just gonna say i mean this seems um like really fertile ground. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, I mean, let, let's just keep pushing on this and figuring out how um, I'm, we're gonna like, and Vincent, now that I can, can make a little, now w one question, Vincent, I have about um, the way uh, groups work on Trove is um, the visibility of a group and the, you know, public, nature of it how um what are the degrees of calibration of that or is right now everything's just like you can if the group exists you can see it um, um i'm so so uh what exactly is your question is it the privacy of 
what are the privacy options for a group? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's just like I, I to like if you to create a group, like let's say you know Phil and I create a factor group, just you know to interact. Is that is that a group that um you know is that a group that is visible? I mean, just in, in the in the nature of of comfort for you, is that an okay thing to do, or is that a, a is that a group that's visible to everybody on the platform that's you know about another platform, um, and is that not okay? So, if it can be private, it can be hidden just to like. Yeah, so you could totally create a private group and you could totally create a group for Factor. Uh, and I could I could tell you exactly how that process works. I could also ask you to screen share and create the group in a few minutes right now and, and oh. see if it is intuitive because yeah. that's no, part, just... of, part of what I'm trying to, there's a few different, I guess, I think there has to be more than just the main privacy settings because there's some ancillary privacy things that are, I feel like slightly different. So I'll give you an example. So right now you can make a group private, restricted or public. Right. However, what if you want, if you create an event and you want to invite Factor to host that event or to organize the event? And what if you're not in the Factor group, but you know about it? Then it's like, okay, does that go based off of the privacy permissions, or should that be a standard thing where you can see all the groups to be able to invite them, or right. maybe you have to type in the whole name, like so. There's all these like other things where it's like, okay, if I want to link to a group, even if that group is private, does that mean it's like invisible? And so right. there right. might have to be another findable, like, findable but yeah. private, you know, uh, appear in directory or not, appear in search, yeah. etc. Yeah, yeah. I guess so I there's like a bunch of permissions around. Yeah, there's a lot of different yeah. permissions and it's I'm still trying to kind of yeah, like ask groups like if you make this private, do you mean this private or this private or this and this and this private? So, right, right. Like, so here's your, Sorry, here's like, your... Oh, I was just going to say I feel like we're getting into some particulars between us and hijacking the convo a little bit. So, um well, no, this raises a question for me because I'm looking at, when I look at Trove, just from my own, you know, just naive, here's what it is, here's what it says. I think the idea that people can have groups that have restrictions on who can join and stuff, but the idea that you can be part of Trove and be like secret in the back room and never show up in a listing seems a little odd to me. I mean, just for what Trove says it is about you know, connecting and all this other, so that to be like, you know, I don't know, that, that just seems a little strange. Although the ideas about privacy and restriction on certain kinds of either linking to or mentioning, it's, it is different than, you know, yeah, I well, see this uh, factor, but they never show up when I say, I say, show me all the trove moves, but I never see, I, I don't get it. Like, uh, it, this might might be and Vincent, Vincent, sorry, I don't want to speak for you. Um, but there are, I imagine what Trove wants to be is is for mission based organizations, and there are a lot of mission mission based organizations whose work puts its workers at risk. So just in that in that vein, I feel like it's important to have a level of security or privacy or anonymity for people working for certain rights in certain areas to not have to to expose themselves to be a part of Trove. But yeah, sorry, Vincent. Well, no, that's yeah, really good. A, no, thanks for that. I mean, it's that's a good really, point. really, so I just, but it, you know, it's, as I can say, it makes it complicated potatoes here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I agree with both of those points of like, yeah, the point of Trove is like to be able to have connections across groups and not to have silos. And yeah, and at the same time, there's a few reasons why I think for good reasons, a group might want to be like secret. So like one is like, if it's in like a draft mode, like you haven't finished making the group yet and uh, you don't want people to join a group that you didn't finish making yet or didn't finish setting up, or maybe it's a super new thing that you haven't even finalized the name yet. Um, then there's like, 
a group like, for example, like an invite only group about, um, hmm. Addiction yeah, I mean, or something, you know. What's that? I said about addiction or, you know, something that people something are personal, yeah. less mm -hmm. than comfortable sharing. Why right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and then, so it's groups like that. And then it also could be a group like, um, like a subgroup of a group. So for example, OGM might be public, but then there might be like um, within OGM, like OGM stewards might be a group that it doesn't make sense for someone to link to the stewards group unless you're already in OGM. Because like, why, if, right. if you're not in OGM, you're, the stewards is like completely unnecessary for you. It's because it's like, it's in, inferred that if you're in OGM, then the stewards, so maybe that group only becomes visible if you're in the main group kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, another example for that is like, if you have a, a group like a fellowship and then you create a subgroup, which is like a small like friends group. And maybe you don't want that to be like, you just want to invite your friends. in. So kind of like a smaller circle of people that it, it's not even like a group. It's just a, a collection of individuals that are tied to formally tied to a group that's public. One, one question I actually have and that we've kind of, we've tried to figure out a factor on and we haven't is for people that could be doing great work in, in certain spaces. And this ties back to the, the who's who kind of this person exists here, here kind of interoperable profiles is say if I'm someone who is bad, is in an addiction group, but I don't want me, my face to be in this addiction group for whatever reason, I don't want to come back up to my employer or whatever it is. How do you handle that? Like, is it an alias for someone that it still links back to this individual somewhere, but it's an, when they enter this room, it's an alias of who they are that, that's not directly connected on the platform. Like, how do you handle necessarily anonymity in different areas? when connected to someone who's an actual person on the platform or in our network. Sorry, I know that's a dense topic. It's just one that we've been struggling with. No, I think it's important. Yeah, I've been struggling with it too because I just had two people that wanted to join that don't want to use their real name and they want to have a complete uh, pseudo name identity but they want to be in multiple groups and they also want to have a profile and they also want to be in the directory and they want to be searchable, but they don't want their real name. And so, yeah, and then it's, so yeah, this is like a, pre a pretty pressing question for me too. Um, yeah, it, it gets real complicated. I guess how I've been doing it right now is because it's in alpha, because there's, you know, a hundred or so members, because most people kind of know of each other um, I'm letting people, if they don't want to put their real first name and last name, they don't have to. I have a field for like a username, like a unique username that could be like a pseudonym, or like a Reddit profile. Um, but I, I'm not making that like mandatory to sign up because it changes, it, it changes the whole vibe of the platform. Like if you're signing up to something where you're not using your actual name, I feel like it, it actually just encodes totally different types of interactions and behaviors. Um, although I also want that to be, yeah, like on LinkedIn, you, ca you can't do that, can you? <laughs> like, I don't know if you can create a LinkedIn profile where you don't, unless you just lie about your first and last name and don't put a picture, right? So, so that's the thing. It's like, it definitely shapes like what type of platform is this going to be? Like Bill was saying, like, Trove, should it be the place where you, you know, where a group is secret? It should, you know. So I don't know, it, it's, these are really hard questions. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think for Trove and your, your plans for Trove, that makes sense. Pete just posted a couple of things that I'm sure I, have, I haven't read these particular ones, but I, I mm -hmm. like have made these arguments with people who, who are pushing real names as, as a ubiquitous, oh, yeah. you know. It was, uh, th these were, um, let me, I, I've got two links on my site that well my site is not maintained very well but it still exists <laughs> um google plus and and uh vic and dotra um had had an argument that no you have to use your real name on google plus and so 
um, it, it was a long drawn out fight and it got very deep and, and very hard. And mm -hmm. one of the classic examples, there's a guy named Ping, a brilliant software developer who's been around the community forever. His name is Ping. Everybody knows him as Ping. <laughs> he works for Google. And Google Plus is like, no, I'm sorry, Ping isn't a real name. And it's like, dude, it's my real name. Ask all my friends, you know? <laughs> Nobody knows me if I would use it. If So then there were terminology like your driver's license name and your passport name and all that kind of stuff, right? And which is your real name, the one that people know you by, the one that pe that's on your on driver's license that nobody knows about, except maybe your mom, maybe not, you know? So it's a, it's a whole ball of wax and um, real, real names are bad. Uh, pseudonym, uh, the capability to have a pseudonym is, is really important. And it, it's totally fine, actually. The other part of it is, I, I guess one of the things that we learned out of that whole shebang was that the, like having a computer be able to look at a name and say, this is a real name or this is not a real name is complete BS because people have all different kinds of shapes of names all around the world. And so if you say it's got to be two words, it's got to be three words, or it's got to have a capital, or it's got to have, you know, it's got to have a surname that I can look up in a dictionary of 100,000 surnames. You know, all of that is just complete and utter BS. It does not make any sense at all. There's a, a classic, maybe I'll find it. There's a classic post, you know, all the, all the uh, like 100 programmer myths about names, right? You can express it in ASCII, you can express it in ANSI, you can express it in Unicode all of that just complete bullshit you know you can sort it people have one name people have you know like less than three names people have a name that they've had since birth right all of it just you know so the thing i learned my takeaway was i had to leave google plus and i wrote two blog posts you know screw you google plus you guys are effed in the head and it was vic and just sticking sticking by his product management guns without any thought about it um, one of them is I have to leave. Another one is a person's name is what they call themselves and what other what they want other people to call themselves. And whatever that is, the computer system has to like manage that. It's not the other way around. You don't tell people you can't live in my computer system because you have a name that's shaped wrong. It's like that's not the way names work. Um, and then the other thing is pseudonymity is really important. And it's actually okay to just say, I'm chill. I, so I, and this is a question that you're going to have to wrestle with, uh, um, Vincent. I, I understand the, you know, it, cre it, it feels like it's going to create a different kind of community. The communities that I have, I have observed work well are the ones that allow you to have a pseudonym. And it's okay if, if you tell them, hey, for the straights, could you make it so your pseudonym looks like the, a straight name? You know, um, I think most people are kind of okay with that. But then you have to tell people, you know, there's, there's reasons I, you have to tell people we're cool with you making an account that's not your driver's license name, you know, you just kind of have to. And, and then um, the, the, the other, the, the thing, Google had two problems. One of them is they tried to define the shape of names, uh, which is really bad. And then the other one is okay, you can use whatever name is actually your name, but you have to prove it to us in the back, right? You have to send us your driver's license or whatever, right? And that's just like opening up a can of worms nobody wants to open up because there's just people who can't give you their driver's license name. And, you know, it, it means they could get killed or worse, right? So you just yeah. let people... Let yeah, them I got to go. jump off in a couple of minutes. This is really, really important and interesting. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, yeah, I think, it is. You know, it is super important. Yeah. I worked with that programmer at Xerox, a woman from whose family is from Southeast Asia. Her last her last name was the, the single capital letter U. Yeah. She used to screw up all kinds of databases. <laughs> yeah. How do you spell well, your last name? Yeah, How do you I... spell your last name? U. No, I mean your yeah. last name. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> So the that's letter, actually well, not my last name. You. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great example of like right now I have it where in the search, the search box doesn't pop up unless you type in at least two characters. So if you're searching for someone's name that's only one character, it actually won't come up in the database right now. I never met a person that just had a single letter, but but that you know. Yeah. Just, I mean, I think. I think our sign up right now, you have to have at least two letters in each of your first and last name. So I think we might need to address that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, 
you know, um, true.net is um, doing some stuff around um, real names and and pseudonyms as you know handles uh, like being an option option for people um, and and they're uh, this is uh, actually John in, in OGM is working with um, Kalia Young, um, who is like identity woman, mm -hmm. <laughs> is her persistent pseudonym. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm I'd be really curious to bring her into this conversation or hear her. I mean, she, she'd be an interesting person to just have like do some hot seat stuff um I, I saw her actually the other night um and she's she's really a character i don't know who here knows her but um uh, I know her really well she's yeah, she's, she's awesome yeah, yeah. she knows, she probably knows you know she's one of the few humans on the planet that knows probably as much as she can about identity yeah yeah digital she's, identity as anyone so yep. she knows at least as much as anyone more than more than anyone i think yeah. And is super sensitive to like all the dynamics of um, pseudonymity and anonymity and um, yeah. You know, the funny thing is I just, so this just is like, if you're actually asked to prove your identity. So I, I mean, I'm old enough now that my birth certificate is a piece of paper that's handwritten with p just handwriting on it and a little pressed seal. There's no thumbprint, there's no footprint there's no toe print there's just a piece of paper and it's like you got to be kidding me you know like somebody says when you were born well i was told it was this day i don't re you know i, I had no idea <laughs> yeah so it is really tricky this thing about well you know prove to me who you are it's like mm, okay bill prove to me you weren't born in kenya <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything until I was about two and a half or three years old. That's my first memory that I can recall. So even you, I, we don't know that you weren't born in Kenya. Like you, you, you don't know. Yeah, I mean, I just have a handwritten piece of paper. You know, I mean, literally, <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got to run. This has been actually really. Um, I think really a good productive. Good and interesting thing. call. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think yeah. because there's some stuff that can move forward. And you guys got me more interested in playing with Factor, although I found it a little. I'll keep trying to use it. If you want to, if you want to walk through or, or walk through what you're trying to do with us at any point where we're around. Well, maybe I'll ping you. I just have a way of just, I'm trying to you know, like use it to, you know, bookmark things and make comments and stuff and create. And I'm like, okay. What would it be like? But I think this thing that we brought up earlier about this two-way interoperation is kind of critical for producing, you know, this universe of resources. Um, Three-way, really, at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were talking well, about trolls. And, and probably, no, I was, yeah. I was just including and, Massive Wiki because. And, and yeah, even more because, and more. And, you know, and uh hypothesis and uh any other yeah so i think um yeah I, i'd like to have another conversation on on that topic uh and then i could also yeah finish showing you guys kind of like how the resource curation works in trove which um i think probably works better to send things send resources to factor and not the other way around because there's so much data that that factor can't capture I don't think easily, like, for example, what community are you sharing this with? What person on Trove are you sharing this with? That going to factor and losing some of that is okay, but the other way around this might not work. Um, yeah, because and, the use case for Trove would be to answer that question. Right. Like, like, so I have something where like a resource could be linked to a project or an event. And that's or pulling both. from the Trove database, right? And so, unless unless Factor could pull from the Trove API and then select a list of projects, then um, it would be pretty hard to to capture all that. 
Um, I mean, unless you guys are open to that. But yeah, I think um, in terms of the other thing I just found a, a little while ago during our call is that um, Zapier has a um, an RSS workflow. So I could push things from Trove with Zapier to an RSS feed that Factor could pick up and we could experiment with that. We could do some experiments just using Zapier. And then if it, if it works, we could, we could make a microservice that does what Zapier is doing, which is, yeah, pretty simple. Um, okay. Yeah. I, so I, I gotta, I'm gonna, I gotta run here. Thanks, Bill. Great. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thanks, I'm working on it. Thanks. And give us a call if you want, if you want a, a hand onboarding or, you know, concierge service <laughs> well maybe i'll just write to you about what i'm what i'm doing and then you can say oh my god <laughs> vincent are you watching the euros just as a quick before we sign off what's that what? are you are you watching the euros soccer European championships yeah no i no. have uh yeah I've been trying to spend all my free time doing some movement myself and not being glued to the screen. So I actually just started a, uh, yeah, I'm starting to do some pickup basketball and, and some soccer with my little cousin who's back from college and uh, just signed up for a basketball league. But yeah, I have not watched any sports since COVID just because my, <laughs> I look at people moving around and I'm like, I should be doing that. Uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you're right too. I don't know. I'm trying to get back to it as well. I've been getting back on the bike a bit. Um, but no, I was just asking. Italy's playing today as well. I was asking. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. Well, now you're tempting me. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they playing? Uh, so it's the round of 16. It's Italy versus Austria. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, speaking of sports ball, um, I don't, I don't, my family doesn't do sport, like listen to sports. We, we rock climb. Um, but anyway, uh, dentist appointment the other day and, uh, the, the dentist is a big angels fan, I think. And, um, so he had the game on the, the previous day or something. And so my, uh, my hygienist is like, oh man, the angels game last night, um, 13, 13 innings. I think it's, so this is baseball, um. Here, let me hit return. Uh, Thirteen innings, uh, and it and it closed out at nine to three. Um, they got seven runs. The the winning team got seven runs in the last the last inning. It's like, <laughs> move <laughs> your head, guys. It's nine innings. Yeah. You know, just call a draw or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baseball can be tough that way. I was at a game one time, and I think it went 13, 12 or thirteen, and it was zero zero, and it finished yeah. one nothing. And it was just. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a brutal. Oh my. Yeah. The, the 20, uh, what's the record? I think it's 23 innings, you know, suspended for the night and then picked up the next morning or something. I don't know. <laughs> so there's, a, I think there's a new rule now where it can end in a draw. I'm not positive on that, but they've reduced, the, there's like a limit. There's a cap now for how long a game can go. Really? Wow. Well, sorry to get into sports. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> Did I read the room well there? I apologize. <laughs> no, you're good. I uh, We could draw some interesting analogies. So there should be yeah. a cap on the game. There should also be a cap on Zoom meetings. You can't go over <laughs> nine hours. You can't go we're over in, nine innings. We're in sudden death overtime right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still a draw. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're winning. I like to think we're winning. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the whole winning losing thing. I mean, Pete, we got. I, I love that. I, I still think about that. Uh, um, uh, everybody winning and what, what was it? Um, cooperation wins in the meta bracket. Yeah, um, it's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> <Cheers. laughs> it's funny. Well, I think we won, folks. Good meeting. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Have a great week, everyone. Right, guys, we'll see you around. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.